This is Jahara. Welcome to another episode of In the Line of Wire. I have uh, somebody very special with me today, uh, somebody who's been a part of the IT industry for longer than most of us. And so, you know, I'll have to behave myself. Uh, please welcome Mr. Ashraf Kapadia. Hi, Thank Ashraf. You. Thank you. Ashraf for is the Managing Director of Systems Limited, which is the oldest IT company in Pakistan. And uh, he's also the former president of Pasha. Uh, so we have something in common. And uh, he's done some amazing things. He spent a long time with IBM, for which we will have to forgive him. Hi, Ashraf. <laughs> now, tell me. Hi again. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, um, Systems Limited, mm -hmm. it's been around for so long. Yep. Can we take a journey, you know, a very brief journey as to how it started okay. and where it's at today? Well, Systems Limited started in 1977, so almost 32 years. This year we'll be 32 years old. Okay. Um, it started as an idea of uh, Sayyid Babar Ali, who most of us know as yeah. was a very from packages, big, right? from packages, Nestle, and number of other company treat and so on and so forth. Right. Um, so he had an idea back in 77 that um, there should be a software house in Pakistan. He got together with Azaz Hussain, who is another very old friend of mine. Um, and the founder president of Pasha. And, oh yeah, and the founder president of Pasha also. Um, he had left IBM because he and I joined IBM together in 71. He left IBM in 76 and was working with Sayyid Babar Ali in one of the companies that Babar Ali was heading. Mm -hmm. And so with Babar Ali's funding and um, entrepreneurship and with Azaz's knowledge of IT, Systems Limited came into being as a service bureau okay. in 1977. Because in those days, computer import was banned. Oh. You couldn't import any computers into the country. Mm. There were a few large mainframes for which you would get individual permissions from uh, the government. Mm. And what happened was uh, Wabda had got a new um, mainframe installed. So Sayyid Babar Ali and Systems Limited purchased the old IBM 360 and wow. installed it in Systems Limited and started it as a service bureau right. and started doing uh, bureau jobs for clients like VASA, the Water and uh, Sewerage Authority in Lahore, uh, packages and a number of others. Okay. So that's but how. Mostly domestic business. Only domestic business. Okay. And not only domestic, primarily they started with concentration in Lahore, later on spread throughout the uh, country. country. Right. So that's how uh, Systems Limited came into being. And for many, many years, um, it was purely a service bureau. We would do development work. We would create applications for our client. But these would be run on our own mainframe systems. Okay. And we continued like that uh, till the early 80s when computer import was opened up in the country and then people started taking their own systems. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, Systems Limited reinvented itself and instead of a service bureau, became a software development house. Okay. And we started making uh, applications for clients at that point in time. Right. Okay. And how many other software companies existed at the time? Well, when we started, there was no uh, software house per se. Prior to um, the 77 time frame, there were a few consulting companies which would also do application development. EWP or East West Pakistan uh, Consulting was one of them and a few others. Okay. But uh, primarily the, uh, the computer installations, one could count on the fingertips, you know, uh, the banks, uh, the airline, one or two in the government. So everybody had their in-house uh, development capabilities. And <clears throat> Something I'd like to mention way back in the early 70s when I joined IBM in 71, uh, software was free from IBM. Oh. So you don't, not only got the operating system, but application system free from IBM. So the, if PIA wanted an airline reservation system in those days, it would be given free. You just buy the hardware, you would so get an why invent. why didn't we stay at that <laughs> instead of now <laughs> selling software? Oh, oh, we wouldn't have an industry if we didn't sell software. Maybe, and it's primarily because uh, IBM was challenged by the antitrust uh, legislation in the right, US, the Monopoly Commission, 
and they un made IBM unbundled hardware from software. And that's how, you know, I mean, the software industry came into being. Okay. okay. Now, but in 1980, there were only a few consulting companies and Systems Limited. Yes. I when did the industry actually start to grow? When did you see more software companies come into Really existence? speaking, uh, I think uh, as late as the 1995 time frame, there were not many companies. There, there were a, a few who were coming up, mm -hmm. but not many. I think in the 95 to 2000 time frame, when the hype of the Y2K was there, when everybody started talking about the industry, also the PC was maturing so that uh, the, uh, let's say, availability became much higher. Then you saw a mushrooming of... Uh, and then IT you saw companies. lots of them going towards delivering Y2K solutions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Y2K was a good time, I yeah. mean, including Systems Limited. Um, in um, 95, we started uh, building a Y2K conversion tool. Okay. Um, and in 1997, we went to the US mm -hmm. along with IBM right. and presented that tool, which was a specific tool for the IBM AS400 to the IBM AS400 labs in Rochester, the IBM labs. They were uh, very enthusiastic about our um, uh, tool mm -hmm. and they said that this is the best of breed we want to adopt that as a standard tool but unfortunately our tool only worked on the IBM AS400 it did not work for the mainframes or for the RISC architecture or the, uh, right. the Linux Unix uh, world and IBM wanted one which would work on all of them so IBM finally fi uh, adopted HAL or HAL which was a conversion tool but uh, we were very encouraged by the good comments that we got out of the IBM labs, the um, Rochester lab. And we decided that we will market that tool on our own in the US. So in 1997, which was uh, almost uh, 20 years since we had been working, that was the first time we stepped outside uh, Pakistan and stepped uh, into the, uh, export, into the market. export market. Mm -hmm. um, so we purchased a company called VisionNet System, which was owned by another former IBM, Arshad Masood, okay. who was uh, in the US. And we did a stock swap with them. So uh, VisionNet System became a wholly owned subsidiary of Systems Limited, and Arshad Masood got some shares in Systems Limited. And that was our entry into the US market. Okay. Our tool was uh, very, very successful. We didn't know what to do with it. Uh, we didn't know what to, how to, you know, take care of all the orders. And we got a lot of uh, Fortune 500 clients, uh, Titleist and Footjoy, um, Countrywide Home Loans, uh, you name it, and Polo Life Run, and, and a number of others, banks, apparel industries, you know, anything. And they've and, stayed with you. And most of them stayed with us. Um, and in the 97, 98 time frame, you know, I mean, uh, we were really making a lot of money. Um, but then came 99 and 2000, the dot-com bubble was bursting, 2001, 9-11 was happening, and the industry started tanking. Um, and we were hurt, just like everybody else was being hurt. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we stepped back and said, let's have a look at what uh, is successful, how can we be um, successful in the future and so on. Because I think in this industry, you have to reinvent yourself every five to seven years. Yes, if or you're going to be earlier. successful or Otherwise, survive. you know, somebody else will come along, take your uh, cheese away and, you know, you will be sunk. So in um, 2001, we stepped back, we looked at what we were successful at. And we found out that uh, just by chance, of all the customers that we had serviced, there were two industries where we got a lot of business domain knowledge. Right. One was mortgage banking, uh, and the other was apparel. Okay. Now, one has got nothing to do with the other. You know, right. I mean, mortgage uh, banking, we had clients like uh, Bank of America, IndyMac, and so on and so forth. Whereas here, we had uh, clients like Liz Claiborne, Kelwood, uh, Polo Ralph Lauren, and so on and so forth. But over the years, when we were doing their Y2K conversions and follow-on technology projects, we had learned how their business worked. And that's essential if you're going to be 
working on a client's IT systems, if you don't understand the domain, it's... In, in those days, it was essential. Prior to that, uh, in the 80s and the 90s, I mean, if you were a technology guru, you could uh, fool anybody into giving you work. <laughs> but in the 2000 time frame, um, business domain became much more Very important. And Systems Limited reinvented itself to say, okay, fine, we know Java, we know uh, C++, or we know Oracle, and so on and so forth, but that's not what's going to sell. If we can go and talk to the client about mortgage banking, then he will talk to us. If we can go to uh, a parallel company and talk to them about supply chain, that's what we are going to be able to sell. And so uh, there were tough years in 2001, 2002, when we wanted to build up this expertise. There was expertise with us, but it was not at a level that our people could go and talk to the uh, senior level business executives. Right. So in 2001, 2002, while we were suffering, we did take an even better pill and step back from technology engagements right. and started developing our people in the business domain. Okay. And that paid off because come 2003, 4, 5, we again uh, sort of really boomed on these two industries. Right. Uh, more on the uh, mortgage industry than on the apparel, but both of them gave us a lot of multi-million dollar clients, which previously we were never getting. We were getting small engagements, technology engagements, and the profit margins were lower because anybody could write a program uh, if the specs were there. Right. So in the 2003-04 timeframe, we again started uh, growing significantly and till last year, we have been growing uh, and significantly growing. Now, this year is a tough year. For everybody. Now, for everybody. Yeah. Um, but I think in terms of overall revenue, we'll still grow. Okay. We'll still grow. Not uh, as much as you were growing Not as much as we are used yes. to. I mean, our things are bad, you know? <laughs> so if you are not growing at 35%, we think uh, there's no growth. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, even a 5 10% growth is growth when you look at the rest of the industry. So we'll still grow, but a modest growth as compared to what we were used to. Okay, now tell me, you, uh, Systems Limited started from Lahore. Now you have a big presence here in, in Karachi. Mm -hmm. You have an office of VisionNet in uh, the US, New Jersey, yeah. in New Jersey. You also have an office in India, in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. How is the work distributed? What kind of people do you have in the different offices? Okay. Um, in, uh, I'll take the U.S. first. In the U.S., we have high-level consultants, okay. uh, both uh, technical, right. where they have to do the architecture of a, a solution that is to be made for the client, but more so the business domain experts, the subject matter specialists uh, that are there. Right. The SMEs. And the they size are, is about 100 people, right? No, in the US, we are about, a 50, about 50, 50 people. 50 people, okay. Um, so they are the ones who are primarily based at the client side right. and interacting with the client, getting their spec, uh, their requirements and passing it back to the Pakistani company. Okay. In Pakistan, um, we have those type of uh, business domain specialists as well as technical architects. Um, and they work for the US clients also, but they also focus on the Pakistani marketplace. Right. And in Pakistan, uh, we have uh, now about a little over 700 people. Right. Um, and they are roughly divided equally between um, what I would call IT professionals, like developers, architects, network specialists, and so on and so forth. And BPO or IT enabled service uh, associates or specialists who are specialized in doing the back office work for a client, like some people may know uh, how to uh, transfer the title of a house from one guy to right. the other. Others would know how to read, uh, let's say, um, gas, gas me measurement charts from uh, industrial uh, consumption or production and so on and so forth. Okay. So these guys are not really IT specialists. They can just use IT tools to do a client's job. And there are roughly about 350 of both categories. Okay. Now, coming to India, <coughs> The, we have a, a subsidiary in India, which is actually a subsidiary of our uh, U.S. operations. Right. And the prime reason for that is that, uh, as you know, that it's very difficult to get a job uh, in the U.S. with a Pakistani uh, company. Most of the people say, we like you. If you were in Bangalore, um, we would give you the job today. 
And basically, the Bangalore operation is the answer to if you were in Bangalore. Okay. Um, and so now you can say, yes, we are. Yes, we are in Bangalore. <laughs> and there is a cross differential. Right. There's a, at least a 30%, maybe more cost differential between the Bangalore operations and the Pakistani operations. Okay. Uh, when we started about two years ago uh, or thereabouts, um, it was a 30% differential. But over the year, that has increased because uh, the Indian rupee has strengthened and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever a client is worried about continuity of operations uh, with the Pakistani thing, we give him a guarantee that if needed, we'll shift your work to India but we will give you a price break if you want to do it in Pakistan. Right. Most of the people uh, accept that and give the work in Pakistan. However, if somebody really wants us to do it in India, then we do it in India. But at, the, at a higher cost. At a higher cost. Of course. Um, but uh, that is more to do with BPO business okay. than development. Right. Because what we feel is that the type of expertise and the, um, let's say, the type of work that you can get out of Pakistani professionals is far superior to the type of work that you can get out of Indian professionals. Software professionals. Software professionals. Right. They are far more enterprising, far more creative, and willing to take on a challenge. Whereas in India, it's primarily, give me the specs, I'll code it for you. Right. Rather than, tell me the business problem and I'll create a solution for you. Okay. So that is a very qualitative difference, which makes me very proud to be a Pakistani, to know that the type of work we are doing is a level higher than the type of work they are doing. Of course, in terms of quantity, we don't ma match, not at all. But that may but be Ashraf. Doesn't that, matter. No, but uh, the reason for that could also possibly be because they've focused for a long, long time on BPO and delivering uh, service rather than creating mm. IP. Yeah, e even taking that into account, you know, I mean, we say, okay, India is probably 20 times bigger than us in terms of the industry. So what if it is 20 times bigger? It's 10 times bigger anyways in right. terms of everything else. Of course. So, you know, I mean, oh, 1 is to 20, it's more like 1 is to 2 if you take everything else into comparison. Correct. Correct. But, you know, not taking anything away from of them, course. they have been yes. successful, they have been uh, big, but I still feel that the type of work that we can get out of Pakistan is far superior. And that you can see in the companies that are here. I mean, we are uh, very small in terms of size compared to the India. But if you look at the type of companies, I mean, of course, System Limited is one of them. But if you look at uh, Pixense, Etilize, Mixit, and you name it, Five yeah. Rivers Technology, there is a long list of people who are doing world-class work. That's right. So, Absolutely. you know, I mean, it's not just systems. It's the whole industry which is at a, at a different plane. Okay. Now that we've got to this subject, I really mm -hmm. want to take it a little bit further. So, okay, uh, both of us agree that we're doing really good quality work mm -hmm far superior work than people expect out of Pakistan, very innovative solutions mm -hmm. coming out of all parts of the country. How can we grow this so that we are taken a lot more seriously as an industry? Because, you know, it may not be revenue that all of us look at. It's also the passion for the work we do. But mm -hmm. still, I mean, revenue matters to mm -hmm. the country as well as to the companies involved. How can we grow this significantly? Well, I mean, the, the standard answer is the answer that we have been giving all along, which is we don't have enough facilities, uh, infrastructure, office space, connectivity, human resources, image of Pakistan, the biggest problem, and so on and so forth. Um, so all those typical answers remain. Now, I don't see, uh, uh, let's say, a resolution of those typical answers, so I will not dwell on this uh, no, what this we, question what is from doable. that aspect, yeah, what, is doable? What, what I would say is that the single most, to my mind, thing which can take our industry a quantum jump forward is mergers and acquisitions. Correct. Because, uh, I mean, Systems Limited, let's say, is a 900, 800 people company. NetSoul is probably five, 600 people company. Siddharth has a similar size. For me to take systems from uh, 900 to 2000 will take a long time. But if two or three companies merge, or if smaller companies merge, um, that way we can come to a company which is a sizable presence. And once we have crossed a certain limit, let's say once we cross a 5,000 man company or a 3,000 man company, 
then growth is a different uh, factor altogether. Unfortunately, our mindset as Pakistanis uh, does not allow us to go as fast on mergers and acquisitions as we should. Because in mergers and acquisition, um, instead of looking at how the bigger pies, smaller piece will be uh, for me, people just look at whether I own the pie or don't own the pie. Right. Um, so a mindset change in our, let's say, business leadership has to take place so that we can move on joining forces together. There are companies, um, you know, which have a very good product but are not in a certain market, whereas right. there's a company which has access to the market but not the product. So uh, a, a collaboration uh, and a formal collaboration, I mean, not just an agency agreement, but right. a formal, let's say, merger or an acquisition by one of the other is what will take this company to, to the next level. Okay. So that's something that we need to that's work on. That's something that we need to work on to educate our uh, uh, CEOs, our uh, owners, that that is something that, that will give them more money. Okay. Now, Systems Limited also works in the domestic market mm -hmm. uh, and has continued to uh, expand that market for itself. Mm -hmm. You also work on, I believe, government projects as mm -hmm. well as uh, commercial projects here. What has that experience been like? And do these projects take longer than projects that you would do in the export market? Um, in a nutshell, yes. Um, if you are talking about a, a government project, of course, there is a lot more bureaucracy involved, a lot more processes to follow, and it does take a longer time for it to get to uh, production. Right. And the in the U.S. market, because again, we are primarily working with the uh, private with, sector and not right. the public sector, our experience so has been that it, uh, uh, our experience has been that it yeah. is fast. Right. But here also working in the private sector, some of the private sector companies move fairly fast. Okay. Um, and you can get uh, things done uh, in, in, a, in a timely manner. Okay. Government of course, one has to take it uh, that their processes, their bureaucracy it takes its own time. Of course. But yeah. then that's all governments, not that's just the Pakistan government. That's probably all government, yeah. Right. Now, Systems is also in the animation space, which is exciting. I mean, one would not have thought that where you began as an organization that mm -hmm. you would reinvent well, yourself yet again to yeah, take on animation. We, we, we dabbled in animation um, because in um, something like 2005 time frame, four time, time, six time frame, we thought that let's uh, try that out. So we did set up a studio in Lahore and we did some uh, very we did nice some projects. Work. Yeah. We, we did some very nice projects for the local market as well as uh, uh, for the U.S. market. One of the very large uh, U.S. studios work was subcontracted to us from another company, and we did some animation for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, that's a, a, a business area which at least I don't understand very well, and um, it is not possible to take that forward without the right sort of management structure, without the right sort of people leading that. Mm -hmm. And that is where we had a problem. So our uh, animation studio, which was called Anivesta, is sort of on a um, slow okay. burner approach rather than really catching on. Oh, that's but so it's, sad. But it's, I'll again say it's mainly because it's a business that we don't understand that well. It's a business that can be done very well, but uh, we don't understand it as well as it should but, be done. But, you know, that, that is what is sad, because there's some very good animation work, including what you did. Uh, and this is an area which can earn for this country a lot of revenue. Mm. What do you think we need to do as an industry or as a country to encourage more animation houses or IT companies to get into animation? I don't know about... Um, what we can do as a, as an industry because you know i mean our industry has very limited resources mm -hmm. but probably from a government perspective if let's say somebody can put together a case for the ict r and d fund to set up a state of the art studio where young uh, creative people can do stuff which can then be uh, you know uh, mm. sent out Good because idea. it requires a lot of investment. It, um, it does. When we got into it, we thought, okay, fine, a few PCs here and there, a few servers, but it's not. It's, it's not really, really expensive. 
and so, also training for the people who come and yes. work in yeah in training the, training i think you can still get with some people who are in the market but the initial expense of setting up a studio with state of the art equipment i think ict r and d fund could be approached maybe somebody like you can put together a business case and say okay let's set it up and then uh, but do you think uh, it's a studio we need or it's in an institute because there's so much learning to be had before you can produce good quality animation because yeah. it's it's creative work design as well as audio and video work animation work okay. so you actually need, though you need uh, in institute which would uh, you know churn out people train them and throw them and out and maybe that can but have a studio or an incubation center within but the you facility. know i mean that's a very very large project True. um therefore i suggest a studio so at least something gets going which is not as formal as an institute okay. where people can come and play with things and you know you could run it that way ultimately you need as uh, an institute and probably an institute which could be aligned with uh, one of the art colleges or right. universities like mm-hmm. indus valley or the nca um but uh, that will take a long time to gestate and uh, come into being so probably a studio which could be funded by the ict r and d because there would be a lot of r and d in it in any case yes. and that could probably kick us off right yeah but it would need somebody to spearhead it yeah. and you can do that yeah always it's always <laughs> me who has to do it and rabia rabia can yeah. get involved <laughs> seriously i mean this you need that i mean we have learned that at least somebody like me can't add value to it i mean i can administrate it but i can't add you need some people who mm-hmm. have the passion for that. creation yeah. and for animation yeah. Yeah. okay now uh, ashraf you also are uh, connected with a number of universities and you have been trying to help them with their mm-hmm. curriculum and advice and mentoring uh, tell us uh, what do we need to do really at the level of universities and at the level of industry to sort of sync them together maybe make uh, sure more of an understanding is created between the two so that we're not always complaining about each other the <laughs> academia saying yeah. industry is not interested industry saying well they're not producing the kind of people we need we, we need to get past that we need to get past that uh, i mean as you said i have been working with some universities kiit fast sometime and so on and so forth yeah. but it's a very slow process and unfortunately um, the industry does not have the time to do that although it is fairly important right um some good work is being done by um, this uh, the university in uh, islamabad i gik no not gik uh, uh, nast nast yeah. by having a corporate, corporate advisory, advisory council yeah. which meets every 2 3 months and, and all of us are on it i think yeah. everybody that so, i know is on so it so that sort of thing could if that could be formalized with other uh, colleges and universities that would help but i think it's uh, the industry has to take a step forward okay. probably pasha can take the lead in it I would be more than happy to work as part of any group that Terrific. is doing that. Terrific, we have the first volunteer. Great. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm always volunteering. That's not a problem. Whether I do something or not, it's different. I volunteer all the time. No, no, you've done quite a bit. <laughs> so um, I think it's important that we remain close to the universities. Otherwise, they work in isolation, and That's we right. work in isolation. It's not their fault. It's not our fault. But I think we need to take the first step in that. Okay. So okay. perhaps yeah. this year is the year. Yeah. Then we should do it. We should. things are a little slow so perhaps mm-hmm. we can start some new initiatives yeah. um infrastructure again is is something that we have all talked about and it parks and the lack mm-hmm. of it parks in karachi specifically mm-hmm. uh, do you think we are going to get past that or are we going to create our own i know you got systems has their own uh, mm-hmm. building or at least has rented well, an entire we have rented an entire building in karachi we have purchased land in lahore we will be starting the building project there soon and many other netsol has its own building you know and so on autosoft so, has got their own building autosoft has got its own building in defense in lahore um so i think that is the way it will continue to but that larger through. companies can um, do but what about the smaller ones shouldn't we be clustering them so that we should be clustering them but who takes the lead on it i don't think that uh, any of the companies are large enough to do that it has to be the government right um the government uh, you know starts and stop and fits and uh, so on but uh, they are also late and then when they do come in i believe the 
cost is prohibitive. I believe that in Lahore now, what uh, the, um, the, IT park, IT park. the new IT park is far more expensive than what people are willing to pay. Okay. Um, you know, Shouldn't I mean, there be a survey done so that they know what people are prepared to pay before yeah, but the, the park but, is built? But the problem is that uh, if you have that state-of-the-art uh, facility, either the government should be willing to subsidize it significantly, otherwise it will cost that. Right. You know, I mean, I am paying something like 40, 50 rupees a square feet, and the IT park is probably double or triple that. Uh, but the facilities are far better. Right. Uh, but our uh, cost structure doesn't allow us to uh, go that expensive. So, so do you think if the government uh, subsidized it, say, for the first three years or something like that, allowing the company to then get to a stage where they could afford it, would that work or do you think that wouldn't work either? Well, uh, once the industry takes off on its own, then obviously that would work. Uh, but maybe three years is a little uh, short, maybe five years is what okay. we are looking for. Okay. So those things have to come into, into play. Um, yeah. Right now, I think that the projects that are there uh, are not uh, really cost effective anymore. Initially, when we uh, moved into the National IT Park in Karachi, it was a very good deal because we got it at 18 rupees a yeah, square feet. Yeah, but then look at the yeah. facility. I know the facility was bad, but even with that condition, I don't think that we ever had any problem to say okay, it's not worth the money. Right. I mean, it was not a state of the art, but we were only paying 18 rupees. And you were all clustered there. We were all clustered there and 18 rupees was nothing. No, it's, it's no. Quite, so, so, <laughs> quite cheap. It's quite cheap. <laughs> By any standards. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I mean, um, either we should be willing to pay that big amount or not crib about what we get. Okay. Um, but I think the government needs to do something about it and they need to do something in Karachi. Right. Lahore, Islamabad still has some facilities. Karachi still is crying out for that. No, there's no there's IT park here, here no, that here, really. the government has set up. Yeah. Correct. Well, well, they talk about an IT city. Maybe it'll happen, maybe, maybe it'll not. Maybe. <laughs> We're working with yeah. uh, the government now. Yeah, CDGK. Yeah, okay. CDG, well, not CDGK. Even TDAP has come into the oh, picture okay. and they're talking about perhaps uh, getting the government to look mm -hmm. at, you know, there's going to be a textile city and an education city. Why not? Mm -hmm an IT city. Um, any other final words, especially for the young entrepreneurs, there are a lot more young people now who are starting companies in the IT space and they're doing some very good work. Uh, any advice that you uh, have for I them? I don't think I can give them any advice except admire them because uh, <laughs> I mean the number of companies that have come up and the type of companies that are coming up. I know, up, I'm so excited. It's amazing. It is. And I would encourage them, especially the young ones, to try it out, uh, some form of entrepreneurship in the early years. Right. Because once you are set and you know, stuck in a then job, or, then you are scared, <laughs> yeah. then you have too many other responsibilities you know, um, to, to, to take care of. So they should jump in right when they are ready for it. Maybe we could, uh, you know, sort of encourage them. I know that uh, Pasha is already doing that uh, workshop. Insiders, yeah, yeah. Um, that sort of thing more. So that there are more people who come out and we see companies, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Jugadi.com or uh, the Fezan Bazaar company. Uh, Scribe, yeah. Scribe or, or some there of the others. There are a lot of them in Lahore and Karachi. Them. I mean, yeah. they sort of seem uh, to be coming just, out of your ears. Yeah. <laughs> just two days ago, I was, um, um, you know, sort of had a presentation at uh, Fast in Karachi and talking to the graduating class. And immediately after the presentation, I was approached by at least uh, seven or eight students who wanted to, who had an idea and wanted to set up their own company. Now that is a very, very good thing. So what thing are you going to do for them? Well, all I can <laughs> do for them is give them advice, tell them where to go, uh, help them in whichever way I can. I have and, a suggestion. Uh, sure, go ahead. I, you can't do it for all seven of them, mm -hmm. but maybe if you adopt one and say, okay, in Systems Limited, since you've got two different offices in Systems Limited, I will give you a desk, a space where you can hang out, mm -hmm. not charge you, and give you some mentoring when you need it. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think that we should. Uh, yeah. We so if they've approached you, maybe yeah. if you can do it, yeah. you can introduce the rest of them to some of the other entrepreneurs. Yeah, I think that that's a good idea that we could probably because the give first them three some months space are the, and, you know, are the most difficult. Just a pat on the back every now and then and see what they come out. With. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you know whether yeah. they're serious. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a really good idea. I think we should we should. Look I forward. get some of these good ideas okay. from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Now uh, you were president of Pasha for a year. Mm -hmm. 
you enjoyed it thoroughly, right? Of course. <laughs> Nothing to do. <laughs> now tell me, uh, where do you think, I mean, what the association has matured a lot over the years and mm -hmm. now we finally have a secretariat. Um, there are things we are doing, but there are many more things we can do. Uh, any suggestions, any advice for the association and how it can grow and become much more effective as a lobbying body is? I think uh, the lobbying body uh, will come probably a little more later. Um, what the, what Pasha and Computer Society, because I was president of you that. You were president of that, of that, as that well. thing yes. as well. Yeah. Um, what they need to do is reach out to their members far more. Right. Um, have events. Uh, I, I mean, I miss having a, a forum a month type of thing. I know it's difficult to do, uh, but that is what is needed because right. that's where all of us get together and then become a bigger voice. Right. Um, unless and until there are companies actively participating in Pasha, like systems like NetSoul, like uh, you know, it yeah, the smaller and, so on, and the bigger companies. The smaller and the bigger companies, they will not become a force or a lobby uh, that the government will look at. Right. Because if I am going directly to the government and NetSoul is going separately and Itilize is going separately, they will not listen to Pasha as much as if we would say, okay, Pasha is taking care of our business, you better listen to them. Right. So I think it's reaching out to the members which is needed as probably the single most important thing that Pasha can do at this But point haven't you time. felt, I know as systems, you have always been a part of Eatalyze. Several companies have been a part of the association. But very often the tendency, as you say, is for the larger companies to not wait for the association to take on an initiative. It's the smaller companies who say, okay, we don't have a voice, we'll come to Pasha and... They well, will I understand take this that. Forward. What I'm saying is that if you have far more events yeah. where all the companies come and meet, yeah. then it will automatically make, they'll become. Yeah, it will make uh, uh, the systems and the utilizers of this world to say, okay, our Pasha is doing this. Let me help them do this or okay. whatever. Okay. But if we are not coming to any events, then that links get break. Okay. So <laughs> more networking events, more, more networking events, sort of so even social events. Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah. And food always brings people together. Food always brings people yeah. <laughs> so, no, so Somebody those, even suggested you know, duck hunting, you know. Somebody okay. suggested. Oh, that's but a I'm, one. Yeah, I'm not going to I am not going to go to that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, uh, Ashraf, for Pleasure. coming in. Always um, a I hope that we can work together, especially on the initiative for young entrepreneurs. I think it's definitely. something that we need to do. And you've already volunteered no, for a few yeah, things. Not only volunteered, <laughs> I would, you know, you know me. I mean, if I'm selling. No, no, definitely. That was Ashraf Kapadia, Managing Director of Systems Limited, and uh, he's, you know, volunteered for a couple of things and we are going to make sure he sticks to it. He's always been a part of the industry, even when he was with IBM, he was sort of remotely a part of our industry. But now he is, <laughs> but then he says he started the industry. Of course. And, uh, but now he is very much a part of the local industry and we are very happy to have him with us. This is Jahara signing off from In the Line of Wire.